Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to have a brief look at Linux Mint Debian Edition. And uh, mostly I want to talk about this because I haven't really looked at it much. I generally use the Linux Mint based on Ubuntu. Uh, somebody else was saying they were having a hard time getting it running in a virtual box. Uh, and the Mint team has said they are working on the latest release. So we are going to look at the um, Linux Mint Debian Edition version 2, which is Betsy. And um, we're going to boot this up in a virtual box. But before we get there, let's just go ahead and have a quick look at, um, at a little bit of the, uh, the information surrounding it. So of course, this is the um, monthly news release in 2018, uh, June 2018. Of course, mint boxes. These are nice. This is actually my PFSense box is made with one of these. Um, but uh, down here, we get... Um, <clears throat> this list here. Next on our list is Linux Mint Debian Edition 3, aka Cindy. We upgraded it to the latest Cinnamon with all the components which we got into Linux Mint 19 already, and we are hoping to release the beta by the end of July, which is about two weeks from now. Linux Mint Debian Edition, or LMDE, is an interesting project because it has a small audience, but one of the most passionate. It is also a very important project for us because it challenges us to design our software with more than one development target in mind because it shows us how far we can go without one of the best upstream component, Ubuntu. How minty can be without Ubuntu? Um, uh, or how minty can we be without Ubuntu? How similar alike, close to Mint, can we make Linux Mint Debian Edition? How much effort, how, how many resources, how long would it take for us to make Mint again if Ubuntu were to ever disappear? And that's a very good question to be asking as you know, Canonical is looking at a potential IPO uh, or a sellout. And as they are uh, ditching some aspects of Ubuntu for server and IoT, there's some interesting questions about uh, the future of Ubuntu. And I think this is a great direction for the Mint team to be looking at because it does raise this question. What if Ubuntu were to vanish? LMDE answers this for us, and this is a key aspect of the project. It's never been a priority. It doesn't need to succeed as a distribution. It's a challenge for us, which tells us more about ourselves, which we need to face and in which we need to do well, not for you, not for anyone, but for us. All right, so we should be expecting within a few weeks to start seeing the beta of this around. And so uh, what we're going to do here is we're just going to go ahead and look at the download page. So if you come to the main Linux Mint page, hit download LMDE2, you'll get the information. Now this is based on Jesse, so it is going to be an older, older code base. Uh, the new one will probably be based on Stretch because that's current Debian stable. And you have a 32-bit and 64-bit on Cinnamon and Mate. These are the only desktops you get. So I grabbed the 64-bit Cinnamon is what I am uh, going to be using mine on. So the next thing what we're going to do is uh, I've already installed this, but for those who are having difficulty installing it, it's probably because it has an older version of the um, uh, an older version of the Debian installer. And so I think what I want to do is we want to go ahead and boot this up and just kind of walk you through the installation process. Okay, so here we are kind of in the uh, boot mode on the live disk. And then what we'll see here is it should get, uh, get this loaded right into the desktop. Now I am uh, running this on a virtual box on a Ryzen 5 1600. And I think my VirtualBox has 6 gigs of RAM in it, so it should be running just fine. And it should boot right on into the desktop without a problem. Alright, so now we are in the desktop, and uh, if you are used to the Linux Mint, this does look just like Linux Mint, like right when it was released. Probably closer to 16 or 17, just from the basic look of it, because this is an older edition. Uh, there is the install Linux Mint right on the desktop. All right, so when you're walking through the setup, you just want to hit your English, go ahead and hit your uh, time zone, keyboard layout, and then go ahead and enter your password, and then you can select whether you want to log in automatically or not. You do have to give this a host name. 
Uh, like I said, this is an older installer, so it's not going to be quite as easy uh, to use. And then the step that will confuse a lot of people is you have to right click on your partition here and hit assign to forward slash. Without doing this, it will um, not allow you to proceed. So that's kind of the step. And at this point, I already have this installed, so I don't want to continue any further. Once you get to this step, it is the installation the same as usual. So I kind of want to get to that. So now we're going to go ahead and shut this guy off. And we're going to reboot it with the, um, with the install. All right, so now we are on the login screen. So we'll just go ahead and log in. And this should boot us right back up into the desktop. And the only thing that we're really going to notice here, this is um, one of the things is that Linux Mint Debian Edition will run on a little bit less RAM. We are going to have a lot older versions of various software. So if I come in and do um, our about system, uh, system info here. Then uh, Linux kernel three, actually that's pretty new. I thought that Linux kernel would be a little bit older. Uh, Cinnamon version 3.27. Okay. I was looking for what was the version of Nemo, 3.22. So uh, it is certainly a little bit older. I think 3.8 is the Cinnamon that is out now. Uh, so everything else here, let's go ahead and look at the um, system monitor before we get doing anything else. Just have a look at what it's running on right now. So we are running uh, on only about 400 megabytes. Now, I'm not sure how much of this is an older version of Cinnamon or how much of this is... Um, uh, the fact that it's Debian edition, it does run on less uh, less memory than um, than other ones. So of course, here's the the old installer or the old up package manager here. Um, so system is up to date. Okay, we can s select a mirror and refresh cache. I'm sure there's probably some updates to do. I'm not completely sure. It does say it's up to date, so maybe we might need to address the cache. Um, so looking at everything, every, like I said, this is essentially the same thing you're going to find on, um, on the regular Linux Mint, except the packages are a lot older. Um, so we are basing this on Debian Jesse. So GIMP 2.8 is still in here. Um, the LibreOffice is still four. Um, so that is significantly older. Um, a lot of these things though, you can install a you can install the newer versions of a lot of these applications if you want to either way. Uh, so of course, here is your about LibreOffice 4.3. Okay, so we just did a search here for LibreOffice 6 Debian repo and I just kind of went to uh, the first option that I found. This is going to help you install this. So we're just going to run our commands. Of course, be careful when you're running any type of terminal commands uh, that you know what's actually going on. So here we're going to remove a version and then the auto remove is going to get rid of any excess stuff in there. So uh, Alt Control T brings up a terminal. Um, I'm going to guess we're going to need to do a sudo in front of that is my guess. So yes. So this is going to, the first step is actually going to remove all of the, the LibreOffice and then the auto remove is going to get rid of all of your other stuff. So now if I go under Office, that that's still there, but that's probably okay. All right, and then what we're gonna do is our, um, uh, for our 64-bit um, uh, system, we're gonna paste this one in. So wget is going to be grabbing the information for this. Uh, and this is, of course, for Debian, so you can tell that. So now it's going to go ahead and download. So it's going to take a little bit over a minute here, so we'll kind of jump back on when that's, when that's done going. Okay, so that is done downloading. So what that did is that will downloaded this uh, deb package right here into your home directory. Okay, so then what we're going to want to do now, skip the 32-bit step, uh, we're going to run 
uh, tar X V F and uh, the title of this. And what this is going to do is it's going to extract the uh, it's going to extract the archive. So one thing I do want to do is just verify that it has the exact same title. Um, and you'll notice that it actually does not. X84-64, and you make sure you get that underscore there. So now that's correct. So now it's going to extract. Okay. So that gave us this folder. And so what we want to do is we want to um, CD into that folder. Um, and we need to go one more step into there. Um, you'll see that we uh, we have two folders that has the readmes and the debs. So let's do uh, CD into that, and that's where we have all of our all of our deb files. Now we're just going to run our dpackage i star uh, star dot deb, which is going to install all of these applications. Of course, I do need to run sudo. All right, so now we are done. I should actually see these show up in the menu. So now you'll see that if I boot up LibreOffice, now I have the latest LibreOffice. So you can actually follow this step on any application that you need. So uh, don't let the old software be the reason to not upgrade your system. Uh, you can find similar instructions um, on a variety of uh, on a variety of different applications. So. If you, I mean, Ubuntu, the, the regular Linux Mint supports your PPAs through Ubuntu. Um, this one, I think you can set up to install your PPAs. Um, however, it's, uh, it's not allowable by default out of the box. This guy here, I'm not sure why that's still showing up. Let's just get rid of that. All right. And hopefully that doesn't wipe out what we just did. I should have un uninstalled that first just to make sure it wasn't um, going to be related to the version 6 or not. Everything else you'll notice is pretty much the same. Uh, we have the ability to install multi multimedia codecs here. Um, we do ship with Rhythmbox. We have Brasario. Um, domain Blocker, that's actually something I don't remember that being in... Um, uh, in Linux Mint, the regular one. Okay, firewall configurations, uh, software manager, software sources, and Synaptic we have installed. So everything else is going to be pretty much the same. Um, so this is uh, this is Linux Mint Debian edition. So maybe you need to ask yourself the question: Do you need to be based on Ubuntu or not? And uh, is this edition going to be just as good or not? Some people report that this one may be a little bit better, a little bit snappier. Some people don't like it quite as much um, because there might be some, uh, some hardware issues with an older code base, older packages, uh, or drivers with Debian. So uh, let that be a consideration as well. But for the most part, this is Linux Mint Debian edition. Uh, I would probably wager that if you had this installed in your system working well, somebody that uh, wouldn't know any better couldn't probably tell the difference between the regular version and the Debian edition. So those are kind of my uh, brief thoughts um, on the Debian edition. I can't wait for the third one to come out, uh, the Cindy version. I will be looking at the beta as soon as it does arrive. Uh, let me know what you think. Was this helpful? And uh, did that help you get this installed either on your virtual box or on your raw machine? So once again, you can help support the channel by checking out switchtolinux.com forward slash support. You can pick up a mouse pad, a t-shirt, or other things at shop.switchtolinux.com. And don't forget to swing by the Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.